So how do we give ourselves the best chance of winning if we don't know how our opponent is picking? What's up, Game Weaver? It's the Jizz, and that is the topic of today's Red Hot video. Picking your champion and doing so in a way that gives you and your team the best chance of winning at a champion selection. Because whether we like how it works or not, we have to go through 10 bans and picks every single game, and games can be decided by who has the stronger laners or the better team composition. So by the end of this video, you are going to know everything you need to know about the champ select process and how to conquer the rift without even stepping on it. But if you do want all the tips in the world for when you step on the rift, GameWeep.com. Our site is the bridge you need to gap close to high elo because our challenger players and coaches are uploading close to 20 videos every single week. So to get access to those champion courses, guides, and analyses, get signed up. Links in the description and comment section. So let's get into it and start by talking about the blind picking process. So what is blind picking? Well, this is quite simply picking a champion without knowing what your lane opponent or opponent is going to pick. Now, the strength of blind picking is that your team knows who you are picking and they can take this into consideration when picking their own champion. For example, if you pick Lucian as an AD carry, your support can then pick Brawl or Alistair. Now, the weakness of blind picking, well, obviously, you have shown your hand before your opponent and you leave yourself open to get counterpicked. For example, if you pick Kled in the top lane and the enemy team locks in Fiora, you have ran it down without even hitting the loading screen. So it is essential when we are blind picking to lock in a champion that is not easily countered, that doesn't need a ton of gold to be effective, that can survive ganks, and to pick for our potential team composition as well, so the more utility, the better. Because even if you do have a bad matchup, in which you probably have to rely on your team anyway, you can win just because your team composition boasts a lot more synergy. Now on the other end of the spectrum, what do we do when we know who our opponent is playing? Well this is where having a counter pick comes in hot, and this is such an advantage because in terms of your champion's interactions with your opponent, you always win. So the big positive of this is that you can stomp your lane and snowball to the enemy nexus. But the downside is that some counter picks are bad for your team's composition, and if you don't make use of that upper hand you have in the laning phase, games can end very quickly. And a quick shout out to all the vain top players who have rounded down in my games recently. But without further ado, let's get into the best blind and counter picks for the top lane. So the first one is Malphite. Tanky, amazing utility, a good laning phase, especially into attack damage and auto attack based champions. The rock doesn't need a lot of gold to be useful, and if the enemy jungler does decide to gank and camp you, no worries, because as long as your jungler does something on the other side of the map, you know a win is just around the corner. And as I show you the runes and core items for each champion I reveal, you do have to be careful about picking Malphite if your teammates are hovering AP champions, in particular your jungler, who is the most important pick to think about as a top laner. Because if you and your allies are all magic damage, what do you do if the enemy team builds just a little bit of magic resist? It's going to be 10 times harder to win. So what you can do is you're considering blind picking Malphite is to even type to your team that you need AD. And if they still don't hover away from their AB champions, then consider locking in Camille instead. And this is our second blind pick for the top lane. You're hard to kill in lane because of that shield and hook shot, which is also great for setting up ganks. All you really need is a Sheen to start one shotting, so she is nowhere near as gold dependent as other DPSs. You can dodge key skill shots in your 1v1 and in team fights with your ultimate, which just generally brings a lot of utility when you start grouping with your team, and she scales unbelievably well, so even if you don't have the best laning phase, the closer you get to your Cho'Gath ultimate, the bigger chance you have of turning that game around. But sometimes Camille won't be the ideal blind pick top laner if you have a weak early game jungler and a generally weak early game team, because you need time to scale, and the more you and your teammates give up because the enemy team is a lot stronger early on, this can really snowball out of control and you have zero chance of getting to your mid to late game power. So if you happen to have teammates that are hovering late game or into champions, Set is the final blind pick top laner you have to have in your locker. And why? Because his first few levels are uncontestable. Well, unless you play against a Wukong. So if you do blind pick Set, get rid of the monkey in the ban. Your level one into everyone else is insane because you're your face breaker and double auto passive. And this allows you to set up kills not just for yourself, but also for your scaling jungler who might need you to alley-oop them kills in the early game. So this early power leads to priority, which opens up opportunities for you to make plays elsewhere, especially when those scuttle crab fights start happening. But what about counter picks in the top lane? Well, the first one we have to talk about is Quinn. And the real strength of Quinn, guys, is that she's a ranged champion. So in terms of trading, it's very hard to lose and you have the ultimate harass. Her vault also gives her the self peel she needs to disengage against champions who might jump onto her. And this just leads to a very oppressive laning phase. And when that laning phase does end and you have a significant lead, you can take this across the map because of your ultimate and impress your influence elsewhere. So definitely one of the best counter picks in the top lane. And I would pick Quinn into 
every single bruiser you see. Now, another AD based counter pick in the top lane is Aurelia. So, if you see any ranged champion in the top lane, Aurelia is the champion to pick because of your amazing gap closing ability. So, if you see a Nar, if you see a Quinn, if you see a Cassiopeia, if you see a Rise, if you see a Kale, how dare they have that much arrogance to lock in that ranged champion knowing that Aurelia is pickable? Now, the only weakness for Aurelia is that getting ganked, yes, you are susceptible, but if you can navigate your way around minion ways with your Q to stack your passive, you can even 1v2 the enemy jungler and top laner in most situations. It just takes a bit of time to actually master her. Now, the last counter pick I want you guys to consider for the top lane is Silas. And Silas, you can pick into any tank. So if the enemy team has blind picked a Malphite, if they're blind pick an Orn, a Malkai, any tank top laner, because they have so much utility in their ultimates, like a Malphite ultimate, if Silas has that, there is no way you lose that team fight. And against tanks, this pretty much gives you a free laning phase because in terms of kill threat, they don't really boast that much. So as Silas, because you're an amazing scaler into the mid and late game, you scale for free, you get that ultimate off the enemy top laner for those team fights, and you hard carry that way. Now let's head to the mid lane, guys, and talk about the three best blind picks you have to consider. Now the first one is Ari, and Ari has everything you want as a mid laner. Good wave clear, you have your charm so you can set up kills for your jungler, you have sustain, you have mobility once you hit level 6, and you even have movement speed in your W, which allows you to gap close to the enemy champion and create space if you're the one getting ganked as well. So she's really safe to pick, and in every game you are going to have an influence. But what about if your teammates are hovering these AP champion. Well, then it's time to lock in Kiana. And one of the main reasons I put Kiana here, guys, is because she doesn't need that much gold to be effective, if any. Even if you're 0-4, I've seen it myself, right? 1-4 in Kiana's, they still do the most damage in the game because she's just broken. So if you're not snowballing like perhaps you'd like to, you can still have a massive influence on a game because of your AoE ultimate and your innate damage is not going anywhere. So if your team needs an AD mid laner, Kiana is definitely the safest to pick. It's just a bit like Aurelia. She is difficult to master and actually learn and combo with so make sure you get in a practice tool and do so before picking her. Now, the last blind pickable mid laner is Galio, who is by far the safest pick out of these three. You have amazing wave clear, you have amazing setup because of your taunt, you also bring great utility to team fights because of your ultimate, you scale very well, but the only issue with picking Galio, guys, is because you do leave yourself vulnerable to getting counterpicked, especially by a champion like Cassadin, who is the first counterpick in the mid lane you have to have in your pocket. And you can pick Cassadin pretty much into any mage the enemy team picks, legit. Your laning phase is going to be a little rough early on because you are casted in, but you're passive and once you get to level 6 you have all the survivability you should need for the early game and yes once you do scale into a game you become the ultimate weapon. So if you see a mage on the other team picked in the mid lane casted is the ideal counter pick. But what about if you see an AD champion in the mid lane because picking casted would then be really troll. Well this is where you pick Pantheon. Who for Zeds, who for Talons, who for Katarinas, it is impossible to play against in the laning phase and because you're Pantheon you always have the first move on the map, you get your serrated Dirk spike for free at which point you will probably be level 6 and you can just hold around the map and hard carry that way if your mid laner does not want to fight you, which they probably won't. Then the other counter pick you have to think about guys from the mid lane is Fizz. So if your team needs magic damage in the mid lane and you're against a very immobile mid laner on the enemy team, Fizz is going to be the ideal counter pick. And unlike Cassidy, you actually have kill potential in the laning phase. So in the first 10 minutes as Fizz, I'm sure you all know if you played against a Fizz, it's very easy to die against him if you do misstep. So in terms of punishing your opponent's mistakes, Fizz is there to do just that. And those are the six picks you have to think about having guys for the mid lane. Now let's head to the bot lane and talk about the blind pickable AD carries. And the first one you can pick is Ezreal. Super safe, very hard to die on. You scale really well and you're probably always going to scale. And you work well with pretty much any support in the game. You don't really rely on that synergy as some other AD carries do. But if your team is hovering over a lot of attack damage, what you can pick guys in the bot lane at the moment is Ziggs, who is super meta right now because of his spam in the bot lane and just how free it is to scale because attack damage carries aren't really that strong early on. It's only a one one, two, three items where they start really hitting their power. So with Ziggs, you can scale for free and actually bully them in lane. So if your team needs some AP in the bot lane, and I'd highly recommend playing Ziggs if you do have a poke-based support like Karma, for example, your poke and harass is going to be nuts and impossible to play against. So Ziggs, if your team needs that AP. And the last pick to consider, guys, in the bot lane is Ash, who is a lot more lane dominant than Ezreal and brings more utility to those team fights. So if you don't like Ezreal, and if you have a support who's really high in engage base, like maybe Thresh, Alistair Braun, one of these, Ash works a lot better because she brings those slows to the party and once you hit level 6 the ultimate combinations you sometimes have in the bot lane are very scary to play against. So if you want a bit more lane presence rather than picking Ezreal you can
can lock in Ash, and in every game, even if you are to fall behind, you're going to be useful because of the utility you're bringing with your ultimate and your slow. Now, in terms of counter picks in the bot lane, guys, the first one you have to think about is Samira. And I don't think you can be an AD carry at the moment without having Samira as an option here. Into champions like Ezreal, Aphelios, Kaiser, Samira can absolutely unleash because of her W, which blocks everything that's coming at her. So if you see an enemy bot lane and lock in a skill shot based champion, Samira is the best champion to lock in afterwards. Now, if you do play against a ranged champion who might be playing really safe during the laning phase, then Aphelios is definitely the pick to consider here because you have such a strong laning phase. So against champions like Jin, for example, Ezreal, who like to sit back and kind of farm, Aphelios works wonders because you actually outscale pretty much everyone in the game and you have a stronger laning phase. So if they do get in range of you, you can pick them apart. But do be careful about picking Aphelios if the enemy support is a hard engager because as Aphelios, you have no peel. So if you do get caught out, you're going to have to burn your flash. And when you get caught out again, you are going to die. So you're really picking Aphelios just because you can dumpster the enemy AE carry who's a very passive laner. Now, the last counter pick you have to consider, guys, is Vayne. So if you see the enemy team pick a Samira, for example, or a Jin, just someone who isn't that strong in the 1v1 department, Vayne is the ultimate AD carry to them picking that champ select. But the only time you don't really want to pick Vayne is if you do have a support who doesn't synergize that well with her. So we're talking really hard engaged supports, and even though they can peel you for sure, in a solo queue environment, they're probably not going to. So if you see a Braum, if you see an Alistair, if you see a Rel, they're going to have to think more than twice about saving you in a team fight because they're just going to be diving onto the enemy team and forgetting about you. So if you see a Lulu or a Soraka or a Nami, a spellcasting based support, this works a lot better with Vayne. So that's something to consider when you do counterpick in the AD carry position. Now let's stay in the bot lane guys and talk about the supports you can blind pick at the moment. And there's Thresh, who is always going to be blind pickable just because of his kit. You have engage, you have disengage with our lantern, and you bring amazing utility to team fights because of what I just mentioned, and also because of your ultimate, which has AOE, and it can actually do a lot of damage and be really impactful. He also works great into engaged supports like Leona, for example, because you can flay Leona out of a Zenith Blade and could do a lot of damage to both base supports because if one hook lands, even if you were to flash flay onto the enemy Lux, let's say, only good things can happen here. But it's very important, guys, that when you do think you're getting ganked or you're vulnerable in the bot lane, to play back and land in your AD carry out because you think there's a bit of danger on the way. But let's say your AD carry has blind picked something like Vayne. Well, that's where Lulu comes in. And Lulu, even if they don't blind pick Vayne, is always, is always going to be so handy because she brings so much utility, right? Her polymorph, her shield, her movement speed boost, her ultimate, of course, her slow with her Q. There is never going to be a game where Lulu is a bad pick, but what you're really basing this blind pick around is the ADC synergy. So I would really recommend picking Lulu over Thresh if you have an AD carry who needs the movement speed and works off attack speed. So if you have a Cogmore, for example, a Jinx, a Vayne, this is where Lulu would be optimal. Now, the last blind pickable support I want you guys to think about is Bard. And I know Bard does get countered by champ and we're going to talk about some of them very soon, but Bard, because of his ultimate and that roaming potential he has, is a super good support to blind pick because even if you do lose lane, you can run around with your jungler or your mid laner or your top laner, whoever is fed, and hard carry that way. You don't have to spend your time sitting in the bot lane with a losing AD, and let's face it, that's going to be most game. But if the enemy team wants to lock in Bard, guys, one champion you can use to counter pick Bard and a bunch of other picks is Rakan. His almost impossible to dodge engages are what makes him so strong, and he also has some of the best peel in the game as well. So if you don't want to dive onto the enemy backline and your AD carry has got caught out, you can press your ultimate, dive to your AD carrier, knock all of them up and save them. And because that instant charm as well he has in his ultimate, it's very hard not to use well, it's very forgiving. So Rakan is your first counter pick. Now the next counter pick we have to think about is of course Blitzcrank. And I don't think we can have a counter pick list without the crank on here. So if the enemy support is a spell casting support like a Janna, a Nami, a Soraka, a Lulu, Blitzcrank is going to wreak havoc pretty much into any range support to be honest. Because if you land one hook, there goes that flash and even if they do flash, you can of course just E flash after them, knock them up and they die. So Blitzcrank in the bot lane for the ultimate pressure into those ranged supports. But what about melee supports? Like who do we pick here? Well, this is where Zyra comes in because even as Zyra, now Brand is also another good shout. Even if you get jumped on a Zyra, right? All you have to do is get off one combo and that's it. You will always win the fight even if you do die and your team will clean up. And this is the same in team fights as well as the laning phase. So if you get caught out in a team fight, just press your ultimate and that's all you really need to do. But she's really strong into those hard engaged supports like Thresh, like Rel, like Braum, like Alistair, even if she gets knocked up, that's really what you want in Zyra because it's making it easier for you to land your skill shots and of course your rude. So Zyra as your last counter pick support, guys. Now the three blind pickable junglers, I'm going to read this very quickly here, are Lee Sin, Zach, and Nidalee. So you're picking Lee Sin if your team has a lot of AP already and, this is very important, if your teammates are hovering late game champions. So in the mid lane, they might pick Cassidy. In the top lane, they might pick a Kale. Lee Sin, you need some early game power here and this is where Lee comes in and we all know how good Lee Sin is in teamfights as well. So 
but not just for the ganks, also for those team fights, Lee sent us the first blind pick. Now, next up, we have Zach, and I would pick Zach, guys, if you have strong early game laners, because as a tank jungler, you scale unbelievably well, right? So if you have, for example, a LeBlanc in the mid lane, if you have in the top lane, maybe you have a set, maybe in the bot lane, you have a Felios Thresh. All of a sudden, this allows you to pick Zach because your laners are most of the time going to have priority, and this allows you to jungle for free, which is really what you want. Then you can scale for free, and it's very hard for the enemy team to really put you down. Now, the last blind pickable jungler, guys, to consider is Nidley, and I would pick Nidley in your games if your team needs AP, and if your team has a lot of CC there for you. So in the top lane, you might have a Renekton. In the bot lane, you might have a Leona. In the mid lane, you might even have a LeBlanc. Even though it's double AP, it's still going to work well because of those chains. So if your team has CC and needs AP in the jungle, Nidalee is the one to pick. Now in terms of counter picks in the jungle, guys, the first one is Kane, and I would lock in Kane into any champion that is a scaling kind of farming jungler. So if you see a Zac locked in, if you see another full clearer, maybe a Karthus, you can just pick Kane knowing you're going to get to your form for pretty much free, and there's going to be no trouble in the first 10 minutes. This is what you want. Now, the other champion who is similar to Kane in this department is Karthus. And again, you really want to be picking Karthus a bit like Kane when you know the enemy jungler poses no early game threat. So the enemy team might have already locked in that Zac. They might have locked in that Fiddlesticks, that Sejuani, that Karzix, that Viego. Someone who isn't that strong in the first three, four levels. Picking Karthus when your team needs some AP in the jungle is a great choice. And the last pick to consider, guys, in the counter pick department in the jungle is Ramus. And I would pick Ramus if your team needs CC, and especially if the enemy team has a lot of attack damage champions, which they certainly will, because in the mid lane, you're going to see Zeds. In the top lane, you're going to see Darius. In the jungle, you might see Viego. Ramus is just perfect. And the only reason you don't really want to blind pick Ramus is because the enemy team composition can pick a lot of magic damage and a strong early game jungler who might be able to ruin your day. So that was it, guys, for the champion selection guide. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know down below by leaving a like. And also on your way out, remember, if you want to master any of the champions, all the roles we've talked about, make sure to check out the game website. And until tomorrow's video, this has been Go Jigs. Bye.